you know, and there, there's a lot of women my age. I've dated women my age and, you know, they may have baggage. They may have kids. They may have not. You know, it's just it, there's there's so many different women that I've dated throughout my life. And this just so happened to be the one that caught my heart. Marcus Houston is in a lot of hot water for pretty much committing this crime. And that crime is being a successful black man with an opinion, standards and options. It's the scariest thing to a lot of people in urban black communities and how dare he exercise that. Now guys, Marcus Houston is all of 41 years old. I grew up listening to Marcus Houston. He was an immature, great singer. And you know, a lot of ladies liked him. They liked that group. If you guys remember, I believe it was House Party 3. Immature was in that. And Marcus Houston went and had a decent solo career. And outside of being a great singer and a great vocalist, he was also a Jehovah's Witness. Now, a lot of people didn't really know that about Marcus Houston, but he grew up as a Jehovah's Witness. And because of that upbringing, he holds certain traditional values that, you know, for, for, for most people, we don't really see in today's world. And because of his traditional values, when he got married, he was looking for certain things. Now, what are those things? Let's kind of talk about it. If you're a black man and you're successful and you have money, you're not pinned down to what you see in urban black America. Like when I wasn't doing so well living in Del Paso Heights, I only got to see really what was in Del Paso Heights. And what did I come across? A lot of single moms. Now, when I went on to college and I went on to start working and got into the industry and got into the careers and got to traveling, I started to see the world for what it was. And I started to realize I had more options than what I saw coming up. And it's not just me. Many of you people understand the same way. You come from Baltimore, you come from DC, you come from Cleveland, you come from Chi-Town. But man, as you start developing, coming on, uh, coming along in your life, you start to see what's going on. And then as you start to improve your standards and improve yourself, the people that you want around you have to be better. The only problem is if you're a black man, you're supposed to accept whatever comes your way. For an example, you're a successful black man, or let's just say this, you're a broke black man. No woman wants to deal with you. That's true. If you're ugly, if you're fat, you have problems, you have baggage. No woman in black America wants to deal with you. We understand that. But now if you're a black man and you have something to offer, you're decent looking, you're hardworking, all of a sudden you need to be able to deal with somebody else's baggage and accept them for where they are, although they would never accept you for where you were. That's just the reality. And Marcus Houston didn't want to deal with somebody else's baggage. Now there's this controversial interview going on right now. Um, I wanna play this clip and we'll come back and then we'll assess it. They have to make up things about me because they just don't have enough. And they're so interested in me and interested in my wife and so interested, like so interested, but what can we create so we can run with? Because he doesn't give us anything, you know? <laughs> so I think that's a lot of the reason why people make up stuff too, because they just can't get it from me. But don't part of you want to say, well, damn, at least she's black. That's a black woman I married. Like you know what I'm saying? And that's true. Like, I like all through the immature days, we would have light skinned girls in our videos like, why can't you get a sister? Why can't you get a black girl? And then it's like, oh, y'all only like skinny girls. And it's just like, you know, the, the plus size women was coming out. And I'm just like, man, I just can't catch a break. But it might be true because everybody thought I was their husband. And I'm sorry, ladies, I'm taking. And, you know, Maya got me. So, I mean, if you want to be jealous, you can be jealous. But, you know, just love me. Watch the movies, watch the entertainment. Just watch my life from a distance. <laughs> you know, I married a sister and, and you know, uh, she's beautiful and smart and talented and, and she's caring and loving and she's everything that I saw myself being in a relationship with. Right. And you know, when you, when you look at a person's qualities, like I was talking to one of my friends and I was saying, yeah, okay, I'm 41, right? She's 22. Um, I could have married a 41 year old woman and it could have been disastrous. They could have felt like, you know, cause I, I'll talk, I'll sit and talk to women and women that are my age, and they kind of have a different outlook on life. You know, a lot of women my age are very independent. They are very like, you know, I don't need a man to do this for me because I could do this for myself. And I also, I come from a generation that 
I'm very, very, you know, love to provide for my wife. I love to provide for my woman. And, and I'm very in that generation, like the old days, you know, um, I would never want to be with a woman that felt like, oh, I don't need you. Or I don't, you know what I'm saying? Like that. So, you know, and there, there's a lot of women my age. I've dated women my age and, you know, they may have baggage. They may have kids. They may have not. You know, it's just it, there's there's so many different women that I've dated throughout my life. And this just so happened to be the one that caught my heart. So what was your red flags like me, when you like dating through all through? I know you probably met like some of the most beautiful women in the world. What was some like red flags like, nope, you're out. No, like a red flag. He's like, I'm done. Next. Red flag for me always if a woman had a kid. Nothing against single women, mm -hmm. single mothers with children. I respect them. I love them. I feel like that's one of the, the toughest jobs to raise a child and to also raise a child by yourself and to be a woman. 100% tip my hat. Respect to the women, women that are raising children on their own. But just with me, for one, I grew up, I never really wanted kids. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I would talk to my dad a lot and he would be like, he would always tell me, look, have your own kids because you never want to have you know, you don't know what the baby daddy's about. You know, so, you know, if you're going to have kids, make sure as a woman that they never had kids before and you can have your own. So I kind of like stuck to that. So that was always my red flag. But then that's again, that's a personal choice. Right. You see, Marcus Houston, he, he had been there. He had done that. And he got tired of the red flags. He, he started to pretty much see the patterns or proclivities. Women that were a certain age that had kids also had a certain mindset that he was coming across. And keep and keep in, let's keep in mind, Marcus Houston isn't dealing with, let's say, chicks from the hood. He's dealing with a lot of women in the industry, beautiful women, women who are professionals. And they had the same things in common. Number one, I don't need a man. Number two, I can do bad all by myself. And they already have kids. And when he said that was a red flag, what it could have meant is not that they're bad people or anything but like the judgment as a wife he didn't think was the best and let me just kind of play back this particular interview of kevin samuels talking to this lady who's looking for a high value man who's 33 with a 14 year old son let's play that to see what's going on when was your last relationship oh about two or three years ago about two how, years ago how long did that last Almost five years, but I, I don't count the last two because it's off and on. So I would say I would give it about three. Do you want children? I have one. Do you want more? I wouldn't mind more. Uh, now, do you want more? Is I do. Okay. And do you want to be married? I do. Okay. So if you say 40 is the age where you think it's time to give up on a dream. What are you doing to make sure you become a wife before age 37? Working on myself now. All of my flaws that mm -hmm. I've, all the flaws that I've come to grow past within these years, I'm working on to better them so that I don't do the same mistakes before. Are you in counseling? No, not anymore. Okay. So who's judging your progress? I am off of experience so far. Okay. So to me, and that sounds like you're doing nothing. You're, you are the person that has been charged to this point. How can you get yourself out of the ditch? If you're so failing you math, if you're failing you math, how can you get yourself a passing grade in math? Mm -hmm. A your phone, you broke up. You said failing, if you're failing math, if you're failing trigonometry, geometry, chemistry, how can you get yourself out of failing? How can you get from an F to an A? You got to get help. You got to get help. Okay. So you said, I asked you, what are you doing? And you said, working on these issues, but you're really not. So you're saying it's better to get the help so you could properly work on the issues. Well, you're 33 years old with a child. Mm -hmm. you, you don't have time to go slow. I don't. Mm -mm. So, um, I, don't, men, I don't understand why, why women um, think that they can fix this stuff themselves. Oh, no. 
you're absolutely right. I don't think to fix it myself, and I don't want to fix it myself. Um, but you said you were the one in charge. But you said you were working your issues, but you're doing it by yourself. Yeah, I have to because it's just me and my son right now. And those are, you know, it costs to have those type of assistance and helps. So I have to start, you know, build from the ground up and get it. Not saying you that it's not You see you keep sucking my shoulder like, so? So, I mean, I know it costs lose sleep, miss a meal. So see guys, this is the same thing going on here. You see Kevin telling her that you want a high value man, but you have all these problems, this baggage that you don't want to fix yourself but you expect some guy that has a lot of money to come and fix it when the father of your child, you won't get married to. So you want that guy to be handling your baggage. And because at 33, you expected a guy like Marcus Houston would want to deal with that. And that's the problem. When a black man like Marcus Houston doesn't want to marry a, a young lady like her, then all of a sudden let's demonize him. Let's make him out to be, you know, oh, he messes with little kids. He's a predator. The reality is, is that you're upset that he got a young woman and there's no evidence of you saying that. And you are mad that he got a young, pretty woman who wanted to be a wife, who's very good looking and he wanted to have his own kids himself. No, a lot of ladies feel like black men need to come in there and take care of somebody else's kids while getting second class service. And that's a problem with a lot of sisters that I see in black America today. You want somebody to come in there and sweep up the rug from somebody else's problem. You haven't fixed your problems yet. You wouldn't deal with me if I still had those problems, yet you want to bring me your problems, some of them financial, and then deal with a 14 year old child, you know, that doesn't respect me. You're not my dad. Most guys are saying no, it's a red flag. What do I get out of this? That's why guys are saying, hey, if I'm gonna do this, let me be create my own kids. She wants to be a wife. She wants to be my wife. I want to take care of her and provide for her. I don't want a woman telling me that she doesn't need me or she's too strong and independent. I don't want to hear it. It's a turnoff. That's all he's saying. But so many people have a problem with black men and their options and preferences when they have them. But guys, what do you think? It's your boy, O'Shea Duke Jackson. Back at it again with another episode of Celebrity Junk. Appreciate you for all that you do. I'm out. Yeah, yeah.